Hi, Rick. Hi, Audrey. <laughs> it's such a wonderful privilege for me to be able to be your interviewer on this auspicious occasion, this milestone in your life. Thank you, Audrey. Welcome into my home. I feel comfortable here, and I feel very comfortable with your questions, I'm okay. sure. Okay. Well, I look forward to hearing Thank some you. of your responses. Thank you. Rick, you have served the same one congregation since ordination for a record 44 years, which is incredible. How did you evolve in terms of your own personal cantorial style and as a clergy person as well during that time? Mm. Good question. Good question. Um, becoming a cantor in a liberal uh, synagogue, uh, it took a very long time for me to acclimate uh, to the uh, to the feeling of this type of synagogue with its uh, English prayers and organ and non-melismatic style, uh, the new American uh, musical style with strange chordal accompaniment. Uh, it was all very strange to me. And it was my goal to synthesize uh, the re repertoire of the Eastern European Jewry together uh, with what I call Jewish art music. Can you tell us, you know, you've been doing this for a really long time. And um, for those of us who don't have that kind of lengthy perspective, can you tell us a little bit about some of the changes that you witnessed to be the most profound in Judaism or Reform Judaism in general? Well, when I... Uh, came to Temple Judea in the 17th century. I, uh, you're not laughing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Most of the people were much older than I. It was the, I was 24 years old around, and uh, they were much older than I. They seemed ancient, and they had a foot in the tradition of the past. So they had a memory of that. So when I did my chazanut, they said, oh, our cantor can sing chazanut. They were very proud, and they loved it. So I had a lot of uh, freedom with that. However, uh, as time went on, and uh, concepts such as t uh, Synagogue 2000 entered into the scene, uh, there was a, uh, a turn, a turn in the, uh, in the responsibilities of the cantor to the congregation. Uh, it became a conflict for many of us. And uh, frankly, uh, it was a great uh, effort to try to uh, avoid traditional chazanut and melisma in favor of the single tunes of the congregation. And uh, thus uh, trying to enter into a new contemporary style. It became clear that the uh, cantor had to adjust uh, his or her repertoire to meet those needs. And the successful cantor had to cleverly meld mm. both musical idioms. I believe during my final years, uh, I was able to achieve that happy medium, even without, you know what. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, that's a big challenge. I'm just going to ask you, given your, your lengthy career and your successful career, do you have any advice that you would give to a newly invested cantor? Well, A, I'm glad I'm not on a pulpit anymore. But from my perspective, I think there are certain basic uh, tenets which uh, should be followed, whether it was in my generation or, not, or, or this generation. Never lose sight of the musical foundation from which we came. When all is said and done, what will separate us from the soloists is our chazamic expertise, our Hebraic academic background, and the respect for rabbi and, cantor and congregation and their respect for you, for our learning, and very important for our menschlichkeit and flexibility. Mm. Yeah, that's, 
that's very critical. And as emeritus within my congregation, I enjoy full respect and honor. And uh, by the time you see this uh, bit of film, I will have been uh, honored on June 12th for my 50th year at Temple Judea with a special concert. Mm. Dear colleagues, this too can be yours if you can remain true to yourself and to the needs of your congregation, to your organization, the American Conference of Cantors, and, of course, to our musical heritage. Well, Rick, I want to wish you, on behalf of the whole ACC, mazel tov on your most recent achievement and on all of your achievements over your entire career. We are so, so proud and happy to be celebrating with you. Mazel tov. Thank you. It's an honor to have been interviewed by you and also to be your close, close friend. That's yes, my honor as well. Thank you, Brett.